Hi everyone, this is Mr. Herbst, and this is the overview of human digestion. Uh, now, what is digestion? Well, uh, we talk about that a lot, pretty much, in everyday lingo. Well, scientifically, it's actually known as the breakdown of food particles into small molecules so they can be absorbed. Now, why do we digest? Well, because large particles cannot enter cells. So let's say that we have this burger. Burger is a pretty large thing. Um, over here, I have my pointer. I'm going to draw a little dot. Believe it or not, that little dot that I just drew that you can probably barely even see uh, represents probably around 100 cells. Uh, probably around 100 cells can fit on that little dot. Try getting this burger right here into that little dot right there. It really can't be done unless we break the, the burger up into its individual molecules so it can be absorbed by the cells. Now what kind of things do we need to break down? Well, we break down our proteins. These foods right here are very r highly rich in, in proteins. We have our eggs, our cheeses, our meats, our fish. Um, we break those down into individual amino acids. Each one of these little dots right here represents a certain type of amino acid. Now, these amino acids here are really, 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 really small. If, again, here's our, here's our clump of cells where we said about 100 cells can probably fit on there, uh, there would probably be around, I would say, millions if not billions of amino acids could fit inside of one cell. This is a really, really small thing. In fact, they're so small that our best microscopes can't even see them. What our bodies will do is take these amino acids and form long chains of them. Uh, those chains will coil up and those, those, those coils will, will form other coils and then our end product will be a protein. Now you may ask yourself, why can't we just take protein from the food that we eat and our bodies use it right away without having to go through all this breaking down process? Well, it's because this, we know that this is a steak, and this came from a cow. A cow is not the same thing as a human being. Its amino acid sequence is not going to be the same as ours. So we have to break it down so that our bodies can build it back up the way that we want it to. What else do we have to break down? We have to break down our fats. Our fats are found in things like butter and oil and, well, pretty much everything that tastes good. We break fats down into their individual fatty acids. Each one of these molecules right here is a certain type of fatty acid. Now again, um, these fatty acids are made up of long chains of, of hydrocarbons, we call them. Uh, all, this black, all this black stuff in the middle here represents carbon molecules. This fatty acid, though, right here is really, really, really small. Again, if this little dot right here represents a clump of cells, millions of these fatty acids could fit inside of that clump of cells. These are really, really small things. Another thing that we have to break down is our carbohydrates. Our carbohydrates are primarily found in foods like potatoes, bread, pasta, and, and grains. Um, all of those foods right there, where do they come from? Well, they come from plants because they are composed of starch. So starch comes from plants. Now what is starch? Uh, starch is nothing more than a storage, uh, it's like a, a, it's a long chain of glucose molecules that the plant uses to store the sugar in case uh, it, it, there's no sun or it needs, it needs to start breaking down that starch for energy. This molecule that I just circled right here, this is an individual glucose molecule. A glucose molecule is a type of sugar. The plant will form a chain of those glucose molecules so that it can store that in, a, in its roots or uh, elsewhere in, in the tree or wherever it, whatever kind of organism it is. You will eat the starch and your body needs to break it down into its individual glucose molecules which we can use for energy. If the energy is not used up right away, our bodies will take those glucose molecules, here I'm going to circle one again, and it will build it up in a similar chain. Now if you actually take a look though, the chain, although very similar to the chain of starch, is a little bit different. This is called glycogen. This is the animal form of the, pretty much the same stuff. This is found in animals. Your liver is responsible for breaking down and building up glycogen. This, this all ha happens in your liver. And if you eat too many carbohydrates, your liver becomes overloaded and you uh, need to start storing this glycogen everywhere. Where else do you store it? You store it as fat. Um, so too much, too many carbohydrates can make a person fat. This cellulose right here, 
Uh, looks very similar to those other two types of molecules, doesn't it? It's made up of uh, it's made up of a long chain of glucose, but you know, as weird as it is, our bodies cannot break this down. This molecule right here is is undigestible by human beings. Uh, this is fiber, actually, and this is also found in plants. We can't digest fiber, but you hear on the news all the time, why do we need fiber? Well, we'll talk about that in another video. So where does digestion begin? It begins right here in this region right here called our mouth. We have teeth, we have saliva, all that stuff will begin breaking down food. And where does it end? Well, actually, believe it or not, digestion ends right here. This region is, is part of the small intestine, and, and that's called the duodenum. Most people believe that the uh, that digestion ends in the stomach, that the stomach is this this sac organ right here. Uh, that's actually not true. Digestion finishes right here. Most digestion occurs in the duodenum right here. So food will be chewed up, it'll pass down the esophagus, through our stomach, into the duodenum, and then it'll enter this, this long, coily organ. This is, uh, this is our small intestine where it'll be absorbed. Every, all the nutrients in the food will be absorbed. It'll enter the large intestine, this big fluffy organ that I'm drawing through right now, and the large intestine will absorb water through it, but again, it will not digest any of the food anymore. Just absorb water. And then it will eventually leave our bodies through... Uh, a hole called our anus. Now, uh, there are some organs that the food never actually passes through. Those are things like our liver. Um, why do I have the liver here? Well, because the liver plays a very important role in, in the digestion, but food never actually has to go into the liver. It passes through. The, di the liver actually adds in some juices that help digestion occur. Uh, now, how long does it take for food to go from the mouth to the anus? Uh, well, it can, it can depend on what you ate, but anywhere between 4 and 24 hours. Um, if you've ever eaten watermelon, you may know that watermelon can go through pretty fast. But something like a steak, a steak is hard to break down, so it may take up to 24 hours for that steak to pass all the way through. So let's review. Uh, digestion starts in the mouth. It ends in the small intestine, particularly it ends in the, in the small intestine region called the duodenum. And there are, uh, food will still move through organs past the small intestine, but is no longer being broken down. Uh, primarily when I'm referring to that organ, I'm referring to our, our large intestine, also known as our colon. Our colon pretty much only absorbs water from the food that we ate. So that finishes our... Uh, discussion on the overview of digestion. Our next video is going to be just focusing on the mouth. What type of digestion occurs in the mouth? Uh, well, thanks for thanks for turning tuning in, folks. Uh, this is Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off.